Brian J. Glamour here, yes dev. So today I want to talk about Snakes and Ladders. Um, Snakes and Ladders is an awful, terrible, terrible, terrible game. It's made for kids, but not even not even kids like it. They're enticed by the, the pretty board, and then they, they come to understand that it's just not a game. They have no choice, there's no fun. You just get tugged around and learn the inadequacy of being a human. Uh, Snakes and Ladders is a game where you roll dice and the dice decide whether you do good or not and that's it. You have no actual contribution to the game. It's just designed so that within about a hundred moves you're done if you keep participating for a hundred moves and and that's it. It just you start it, you participate, and then you finish. How it's still sold today I, I don't know. Who who thought it was a good idea to keep making this terrible game? Who who buys this for their kids? It's possibly the same people who buy JRPGs because JRPGs are snakes and ladders. You have no control over success or failure. All you can do is participate until it ends. C consider in a JRPG, you win a battle, you get more stats, and it helps you get further along in the game. You lose a battle, it, you, you don't get your stats, but you get to keep trying again and again until you do get your stats and then you can move on. It's no different than Snakes and Ladders, where if you keep hitting the snake, it, it's, a, it's a little setback, but as long as you keep participating, you'll eventually win. It's not fun. It's not interesting. It's, it's terrible game design. In essence, the game is just playing itself. There's no point in the player being there at all. And so, a lot of game devs, they start using that random generator, and um, you, you might not have a game that's so terrible that it's taking options away from the player with random number generators, uh, but you are taking away the conscience of yourself. The designer is playing a game with the player, and uh, if you put a random number ge generator to make your decisions, it is on your behalf being lol random instead of having any meaningful input. Of course, random number generators are not necessarily a problem, and I say that very cautiously. The, the problem is uncertainty. So there's a quote, I'm not sure who said it, whoever is cited to have said it probably didn't say it, which is insanity is, is doing the same thing, expecting different results. And RNG facilitates this sort of behavior because used, used poorly, and it normally is used poorly, a random number generator will generate random results for the same inputs. Game developers often use it this way, citing that they want dynamic situations or dynamic thinking, strategic uncertainty, and that's a load of bullshit. What they want is the player to be insane. This is why gambling is built around uncertainty of your inputs and results. Doing the same thing and getting different results is a good way to facilitate addictive behaviors, to facilitate irrational behaviors in your players. It might be what gambling is about. Gambling is about getting the player to continuously play and let go of money. And, and try and play the odds. Um, but games, gaming, traditional gaming, is about learning. And you can't learn things that can't be learned. Irrational randomness. You, you can't learn how to predict a random number generator. Now that's not to say that random number generators can't be used in a non-addictive gambling sort of way. Because it's more than just being randomness, it's the uncertainty of knowing what your actions uh, result in. So if you do all the randomness before there are any actions to take place, like in a shuffling of a deck, there's nothing necessarily wrong. And shuffling a deck is no different than procedurally generating a level. The only problem is if knowing the layout of the level, knowing the composition of a deck is important to the game, and it's being withheld from them. Shuffling a deck can end up in bullshit not knowing what the hell you're doing like solitaire and completely legitimate variation like free cell. It's just a matter of how you manage the randomness.
But the best way to manage randomness is just to not have it whenever possible. And most of the time it is very possible to not have randomness. For example, Monopoly is a pretty good game and, and it manages its randomness very well. The randomness of the dice rolls. Um, some might think it's completely mandatory. How would you play Monopoly without dice rolls? It, it certainly manages the randomness perfectly fine. Uh, I don't think anyone has ever said that their dice rolls m made or broke their, their game of Monopoly. There's a lot of player decisions that go into any single game of Monopoly that cannot be broken down into the results of, of random number generators. But I think it could be better. So consider this. If instead of uh, dice rolls controlling movement, what if the players decided where they would end up in the next six spaces? So in, in that situation, they would obviously always pick the most desirable square, right? So the first problem would be, how do you even make them fall onto onto uh, opponent's spaces? So rather than saying, oh, I can't, can't do it this way, let's use a random number generator, I would say, oh, that's just a problem that needs to be solved. We can solve that. We could do that by making it so each player has to leapfrog the other. So the first player moves three spaces. The second player has to start from where the first player left off. With each player leapfrogging the other, it's no longer just picking the the best space uh, for yourself. It's also figuring out what options you want to leave open for the following player. And so not only have we gotten rid of random number generators, we've also introduced a metagame. And I, well, I haven't actually tested this, so I don't know. I don't know if that would actually work. It might need to change the number of spaces from six to three or whatever. But um. It could be made to work. I believe Monopoly could be made deterministic and actually enjoy a, a better gameplay from it. Because the only time that I really think it's suitable for random number generators for you to be asking the RN god for for guidance is when you're so low level into the, the system of your gameplay mechanics that there's no other relevant data to source from. Because if you're making like, you know, AI, instead of picking a random number to decide, you know, where AI goes or what action they want to take, it's better to just, you know, figure out what the player's doing and, and create actions based on that. Uh, figure out what other AI states are doing, the layout of the level. It's, there's plenty of things you could source uh, data from rather than the RN god. RN god. So yeah, don't be a dick to your players. Don't facilitate addiction. Have meaningful, deep mechanics that are based on, like, actual things instead of random numbers. Yeah. Yes, Dev.